Chapter 10. Your History All in all, it was a short story. You and Scott applied to Classic Sans's position. Scott harassed you ever since you got the said position. Why didn't you tell us about this when the harassment started months ago? Black asked, large arms crossed. Well, he was caught doing it and had to leave campus. Besides, I wasn't exactly close with any of you guys, you said, leaving unspoken a lot of details to those words. Black's cheeks turned slightly violet as he looked away. His shoulders pulled back, posture becoming more rigid as he matched your gaze with his own. Yes, well, reader, things are different now. It's obvious this human is rather cowardly, leaving notes and spray-painting your car. The chances of him directly attacking you appear low. So, does that mean I'm safe and you can head home now? No, it just means I don't have to keep my eye on you as long as you stay in a public setting. Given how this Scott saw you with a monster, he may already be planning another work of art on your car. Wonderful, you muttered, recalling how security was stronger at the buildings versus the actual parking lots. Given the right point of time in the day, you could do anything in the parking lot without another soul witnessing. Which is why I'm going to do surveillance on your car while you go to your next class. If we're lucky, I'll catch him on camera doing the damage which we can report to the college. Black said, pulling out his iPhone. His plus-size iPhone, which he bought only three months ago because he literally gets every version which comes out. You, meanwhile, were still making do with a three-year-old android. Are you sure you'll be okay? I mean, what if he notices you? You said, not really able to see how a giant stout skeleton could hide in the background. I'm a monster who's able to summon a dozen weapons who has the strength of five human men. I think I'm good. Black said with a roll of his eyes as he finally opened the class door. By the way... If I'm not mistaken, you're already five minutes late for your next class. Crap! You hissed, running out to the now empty hallway. With lungs out of breath, you rushed into the classroom where the teacher was already beginning his lecture. Luckily, he didn't verbally call you out on it, just gave you the evil eye as he continued speaking. You mouthed an apology as you took your seat, pulling your book out. The subject was history, but... All you could think of was what would happen in the future. Was Scott going to target your car right here on campus? Was Black really going to be able to catch him in the act? I'm sure he'll be fine, you muttered to yourself as your hand wrote down notes from a lecture you really weren't listening to. Black was by monster standards pretty tough. Before his time on the surface, he was a captain. The surface watch list. Your hand froze. Pen stopped just short of finishing a word, your brain suddenly feeling like it was going into overdrive. Ambassador Frisk put Black on the surface watch list. Assuming they were serious about the punishment, Black's face would be placed on both the monster's government website and the county website as well. He'd be noted as a monster who showed uncalled-for aggression and encouraged any human who spotted him in any way acting violent to videotape slash picture the act and send it to either the sheriff's office or the royal family, at which point he'd be forced to go underground to the monster's kingdom, not allowed to step on the surface for five years. It was in a lot of ways like how someone was placed on parole right after prison. Technically free, but placed under rules because they weren't trusted. Would Scott have checked the website? Would he know if Black was on the list? You muttered to yourself. If the answer was yes, then the skeleton could be in serious trouble. A reader, I'd appreciate it if you didn't mutter in my class. The professor said, a bald man whose eyes seemed to get scarier. Apparently he was reaching his limit with you. I'm sorry, sir. I am... Um, I think I have a stomach flu. I need to head to the restroom. You said, clutching your stomach. You were already leaving the classroom as the professor stuttered a protest. You also heard a few snickers. I can't believe I'm risking expulsion for the jerk. The said jerk, though, promised to protect you and was putting himself at risk for you. You didn't ask for it, 
but that didn't mean you wanted him hurt because of it. You headed straight to the parking lot, wishing you spotted a security guard on the way. Then again, what would you say? Oh, hello, my skeleton bodyguard who is on the surface watch list may need help. Oh, shit. You wish your eyes were playing tricks on you because what you saw seemed impossible. Big, imposing black who could make men cringe with a glare was curled up in a ball next to your car. Scott held a phone aimed down at the monster while two other guys repeatedly kicked the skeleton. You didn't recognize them, but they were big, as in football linebacker big. Their shoes tore and dirtied the violet shirt. You could see a couple of cracks already on Black's skull as you ran forward. You paused a second, realizing calling security would probably be a better option. Then, you saw one of the big guys grab a tire iron from the ground. Time for this fucking monster to get a hole in his skull and get ready for some pain, you- Ugh! You stopped thinking about security or about how stupid you were being. All you could think of was one simple thing. You didn't want to see Black die. You threw yourself full body at the guy from behind, finding yourself grabbing him as he toppled down. The tire iron dropped with a clang. Relief was short-lived as the thug easily pushed you aside. Who's this fucker? That's the monster lover I was telling you guys about. Quick, get- hey! You jumped up and made a clumsy swiping motion. Scott flinched, probably expecting a punch, but he wasn't your target. Your sweaty hand slapped against the phone, making him lose his grip. The glass shattered as it flew onto the pavement. You little shit! The other thug jumped over Black. Now it was your turn to be tackled. You hissed in pain, head hitting the pavement. He didn't stop there, though. You yelped as you got punched in the stomach. <laughs> like that, fucker? I'm going to... <sighs> as you tried your best now to throw your lunch up... You peeked an eye open. The big guy was screaming as he stared down at his hand impaled with a jagged bone. The crude weapon was held by Black, his other hand clutching the guy's neck. The other thug finally got up, staring at the scene with horror. Black simply gave him a side glance, smirking as he twisted the bone weapon. Blood dripped and squirted from the hand, tears running down the man's face. Now, his fellow partner in crime wasn't watching anymore, but turned and ran deeper into the parking lot. You... you can't do that. You're on the surface watch list, Scott said, shaking slightly. There's actually an exception to that rule. We're allowed to attack if we see an innocent human in danger. It's in the fine print of the law. Irrelevant, though, since you have no phone to record me, Black said finally pulling out the bone dagger and throwing the man away from you. He rolled along the pavement, clutching his hand the whole time and whimpering. The skeleton got up, looking down at Scott from his superior height, as he casually cleaned the blood on his bone weapon with a purple napkin he pulled out of his pocket. I'll tell them you attacked us unprovoked. You're just a dirty monster. They'll believe me when... No, they won't, Scott. It's on record that you harassed me. When I tell them the truth, everyone is going to know what you tried. You said, wincing as you spoke. You had a splitting headache from hitting the pavement. Scott's head switched from you and Black. The sound of a car's motor starting could be heard. Without another word, the skinny man turned and ran. You saw a car moving at high speed to get out of the parking lot. It nearly ran over Scott as he got in the way, hands waving. It stopped only a half a minute for him to jump in before the tires squealed, and it headed out. He's getting away, you groaned, trying to get up. A large hand grabbed your shoulder, gently but firmly keeping you on the ground. I already have the license plate number. Don't worry about it. Stay still, reader. You may have a concussion, Black said, hand going from your shoulder to your head. You felt phalanges move aside hair, tapping a bump forming on your head. Meanwhile, you couldn't take your eyes off the spiderweb cracks on his skull. You had no doubt the tire iron really would have made a hole. It might have even dusted him. An idea formed past the headache, and you found yourself searching your pockets. With a sigh, you felt the wrapped candy and pulled it out. Black, 
I have some monster candy. I think you should take it, considering how many times they hit you, you said, holding it out. Let me see, Black said, snatching it up quickly. Sheesh, a thank you would be nice. Yes, this should do fine. You didn't have time to respond before feeling a phalange push between your lips and force your mouth open. The candy already unwrapped and pushed against your tongue. The second you tasted it, you could feel your headache subsiding. The stomach pain you felt only a moment ago was disappearing as well. You could have asked. You muttered, with candy under your tongue, jerking your head back. I don't have time for my ward to go concerning himself with my health. I've survived much worse than this. Black said, brushing his shirt of dust. A futile effort, considering some of the shoe marks had stained the fabric with ugly marks. Your, um, ward? You asked, feeling a little fear. The word ward sounded a bit medieval. Oh god, was he pulling you into one of his renaissance fantasies? It's an apt term for someone I'll be watching over closely. Until I know you're safe, I'm not leaving you out of my sight. Black said with a huff his words accompanied by a finger stroking your cheek. The intimate gesture was so surprising, all you could do was sit there and begin to blush. You weren't even sure if it really happened, because the next second, Black was standing up and waving his hand to someone behind you. You heard the stomping of boots and turned to see three security guards. What's going on here? said the lead guard, looking from you, Black, and finally to the thug clutching the bloody hand. The fucking monster tried to kill me, screamed the man as he pointed at Black with his good hand. If only I were allowed to kill you. Black growled, arms crossed. You quickly spoke up, explaining what happened. Telling yourself Black wouldn't go and do something like stroke your cheek, it must have been your imagination. Seriously, this was Black we were talking about. I shouldn't have done it. Black whispered to himself. You didn't hear. You were a safe distance away, explaining what happened to the security guards and police officers. So far, it looked like things were going well. Two police officers showed up ten minutes later, and they were all listening carefully to what Reader said. The filth being sent to a hospital with police escort. None of the police mentioned arresting Black for violating the surface watch list. It helped how the hoodlum had no business being at the college. Furthermore, Scott wasn't there to defend himself. Running away only made things worse for the rat. I shouldn't have touched you like that. Why did I touch you? It was unnecessary. It had nothing to do with checking on your health and well-being. It had just been so... instinctive. A gesture which felt right and followed through on without thought so different with her, where he analyzed every action he took to make sure she approved. Even during sex, he never felt so unguarded as to... Not thinking of that, Black muttered, both verbally and mentally ordering himself to think of other things. So his mind turned to the license plate number, to the other two threats who were not arrested yet. When you were safe back home, he'd have to go hunting, and... He wasn't going to lie to himself. A part of him looked forward to it. Hunting alone, though, was too dangerous, even with those two idiots. It made him think of how Mutt would normally already be there, ready to join him for the pursuit. He'd have to look for help with his extended family. Blue was out of the question. In fact, they couldn't dare speak a word of what happened to him. His marshmallow twin was too unstable at the moment, which left him with classic paps and red. Red would be the best choice, but how he hated the skeleton's laziness. The former human eaters, Sans and Papyrus, were good at hunting, maybe even better than him, considered how hunting is what kept them alive. Involving them, though, increased the chances of you finding out, and he didn't need his ward complaining about him taking the law into his own hands. Hey, Black? You asked, waving a hand in front of his face. Black blinked, realizing with slight embarrassment he had let himself get lost in thought. I am... Yes, Ward, what is it? 
Well, the police want a recorded testimony from you of what happened before we leave. Also, I was going to call Ambassador Frisk and ask them to take you off the surface watch list, you said, fidgeting in front of the big skeleton. I would appreciate such a thing, Black said, nearly smiling at the kind gesture. Given his unchivalrous behavior in the past, Black was surprised you trusted him enough to have him removed from the list. He had threatened you, stalked you, and nearly physically assaulted you. It appeared he earned some trust now, though. Now, hopefully, with his face not plastered on websites, his hunt will go smoother. Stay here within sight while I speak to the police. We'll leave straight for the mansion afterwards, Black said, getting a nod in return. You were taking orders well. Now, if only you didn't run headlong into danger so recklessly. He couldn't really complain, though, since it did save his life. His only way to pay such a debt was to make sure you were truly safe. Black walked the police officers and answered all their questions. No, he never saw the humans until today. Yes, the stabbing of the hand was necessary due to the violent assaults the man was doing. Just look at the cracks on his skull for verification. No, he had no clue as to where they were going. It wasn't like Black was lying. The police never outright asked for a license plate number. If they were too stupid to ask, then all the more proof he should handle those two himself. Now, reader, I'm not the type to say I told you so, but... Yes, classic paps, you were right. I needed a bodyguard. You said with a roll of your eyes. As soon as you reached the mansion, Black explained what happened. It was weird how he did it, though, not with his usual arrogance and snobbish attitude. It was more like a military officer reporting to his superior, noting relevant details only with no personal opinion. Classic Paps took the whole debriefing with a nod, then calmly walked up to you with a smile and gave you a bone-crushing hug. For a second, you were afraid you would need another monster candy before he finally let you go to breathe. Classic Paps, Black, I wanted to ask a favor. Could we, uh, not tell the others this happened? You said, already imagining how Blue would freak if he found out. Forget about getting personal space. He'd handcuff you to him if he found out about this. Sans and Papyrus would barely be better, maybe even insist on being two additional bodyguards. I can understand with Blue how it would be best to not upset him. Classic Paps said, rubbing his chin. I may want to share some details of this with Red. Having a monster who can shortcut, help keep an eye on my ward, would be helpful. Black said, giving your shoulder a pat. Classic Paps' jaw nearly dropped as he stared at the said shoulder which got a pat. You stood frozen, a bit surprised at the gesture as well. Well, yes, of course, Black. Let me get you in the kitchen for some monster candy. Classic Paps said, nodding towards the kitchen. I won't refuse. Don't leave the grounds alone, Ward. Either I or Red will stay by your side when you travel out. Black said, the words making you forget about gestures and think more about the lack of freedom. How long is this escort thing going to be happening? You asked, trying to come up with a way to argue about it. You could call Ambassador Frisk, but... Considering you were actually assaulted, they might very well agree with the skeletons on you not being alone. I'm sure they will be caught in no time. I'd give it a couple days at most before you no longer have to worry about them. Black said as he and the other skeleton headed to the kitchen. Right, you said with a sigh. Scott didn't strike you as the brightest guy in the world, so maybe Black was right. And... Didn't he say he got the license plate? No doubt he shared it with the police, and they were already working on catching the two 